This is my Hobby King Quantum Trifecta. When the daily was published uh, back in January, I was not in the country, so I didn't catch it at the time. Um, but when I was catching up and missed YouTube videos, I came across it and wanted one instantly. At the same time uh, that I saw this particular video, I also saw the one for the HK Pilot Mega Micro flight controller and the two looked like they were a match for heaven so I ordered them both. Uh, the first problem I encountered of course was that the power distribution board that came with the HK Pilot uh, Mega Micro wouldn't fit into the power bay on the trifecta. It has an inductor on it and that inductor was too tall so I had to modify the, the bay by taking a router and routing uh, a little channel uh, so that the inductor would fit into that channel and the board would sit flush. However, once I did that, I found that the power connector um, that feeds the flight controller was now blocking uh, one of the entrances for the cables. So I had to change the orientation of the power board, which meant that the bit I routed was in the wrong place, so I had to write another bit. I'd also decided to go for the Afro Slim ESCs. I decided to go for Sunny Sky motors, and those motors drew 18 amps on a, when swinging a six inch propeller. So the Afro 12s wouldn't be sufficient, but the ESCs, when I got them, didn't fit into the channels on the underside of the legs, so I had to make some modifications. What I did was I trimmed off the excess heat shrink on the ESCs. I bought some uh, capacitors. Um, I desoldered the ones that were on the board and I put on these new ones with the longer legs and bent them over. Uh, that then allowed them to fit into the channels. I also had to make some modifications to the one that fit inside this um, retractable leg. Uh, again, I was just simply removing some of the heat shrink that was on uh, the ESC and uh, moving some wires around. Otherwise, it seemed to fit quite well. I had some problems um, getting the Sunny Sky motors that I had wanted. They were out of stock. And so I had to get uh, replacements so that I could use the board. So I had a quick look to see what I could get in the UK and um, I found these motors. Uh, they were on the Hobby King uh, site, available in the UK warehouse. Uh, so I just simply ordered them. Uh, the uh, specs confirmed that they could swing a 6 inch prop and on a 3S battery, so that's what I went for. Uh, I didn't pay much attention. Um, I was a bit concerned when I got them and found that the wires were very thick. They used 3mm uh, bullet connectors as opposed to the 2mm ones that were on the ESCs. That got me a bit concerned, so I had a, a look to see uh, what the specs actually were before I made any modifications and discovered that they drew 35 amps swinging that 6 inch prop on a 3S battery. So obviously not much good with a 20 amp ESC. So I had another look around and ordered these DYS motors, the 1806 motors. And I have to say I'm very pleased with them. Other problems that I encountered, I've got a free sky D4R2 uh, receiver there. Um, I was going to feed the flight controller board with combined PPM. Um, that, that particular receiver is quite good at doing. However, uh, if you have a look on Google, you'll find that the APM board loses sync with that particular receiver, but there is a firmware upgrade available to give you full eight channel combined PPM and uh, a full sync pulse. So that required a firmware upgrade of the receiver. Um, I had a quick look to see how to do it and 
it seemed to require a new programmer, but uh, an FTDI board could be used. I had one already um, that I had bought to um, upgrade or modify the display on an OSD that I intend to put onto this. I knew it worked with the OSD, so that wasn't the problem. Uh, looking on DIY drones, um, I needed to update some parameters in this to invert the receiver and transmit signals. Um, and to do that, I had to download a program called FTProg. FTProg didn't use the same USB drivers as um, I had previously been using with that FTDI board. So I needed to update the USB drivers so that FTProg could recognize the board, which it did. I then tried inverting the signals. Uh, when I wrote it back, the signals weren't inverted. I tried it several times. I tried it under different operating systems, Windows 8 and XP. Um, that didn't work. So, uh, rummage in the attic, I found uh, a breadboard and a TTL 7404 chip, which is a hex TTL inverter. I wired that up to the FTDI board and to the receiver and was able to update the firmware. Then I was trying to get the flight controller board to understand the PPM coming from the receiver. I had some problems with that. The documentation that comes with the HK Pilot Mega Micro says cut a track on S4 and solder uh, or short out the other two pins. So I tried that, but I couldn't get it to receive the PPM. Um, I tried shorting out channels two and three, and again, that didn't seem to work. Then I was watching a YouTube video by Dr. Drone. There seems to be several Dr. Drones on uh, YouTube. This is dr.spacedrone. And he was using the HK Pilot mic Mega Micro uh, on a quad. And he just treated it like a standard APM, shorting out channels two and three, putting the combined PPM into channel one um, without doing any jump ring on the board. So I reversed the jump ring and tried it and it worked. I later found out that when you do the shorting as uh, indicated in the documentation for the flight controller board, channel five is the one that the CPPM should come in. So I might try that at some stage. Um, configuring the gyros on the flight controller board, I used the method used by Painless360 um, using standoffs. That seemed to work quite well. However, when I mounted it into the frame, the mission planner complained about Barrow GPS differences and insisted that I reconfigure it. So I had to do it in the frame. Um, everything wired in. I decided to take it for the first flight. And of course, as soon as I tried to take off, the model spun quite violently. This was because the servo is reversed. As you can see, it is not, the servo goes one way, the motor goes the other. So I had to reverse the servo. Finding out how to do that on the APM board was more time consuming than I thought it would be. Mainly because I put in what the symptoms were and searched Google. And I found a lot about reversing the yaw direction, either on the transmitter or on the receive side of the flight controller. And that's not really what we wanted to do. I knew that that wasn't what was wrong because I hadn't input any yaw. Um, this was the flight controller board doing it directly. So once I found out that you had to reverse RC7, um, it was fairly simple uh, to do through Mission Planner. Second flight, it flipped immediately, broke a propeller. Luckily, the clockwise propeller, so I had a spare. Uh, it turned out to be uh, because I had reversed the connections for motor one and motor two. Uh, once I sorted that out, I was able to do a uh, third flight. Um, that one resulted in uh, rather violent vibrations. 
the uh, the try doing uh, sort of vibrations like this, and it was coming towards me. So um, on to Google again and found page 64. I think it was 64 of the trifecta thread on RC groups and uh, a contributor called Crash Me Up saying to reduce the vibrations, um, put in a filter on the uh, CPU and explained how to do that. Um, I put that in and it did reduce the vibrations considerably. It then struck me that these vibrations are also could also be due to the PID readings being too high and it overcompensating when trying to correct its flight. So Crash Me Up had details of how to set up channel 6 on the transmitter to adjust the rate PIDs but keeping it in stabilised mode. So I tried that and while Crash Me Up suggested starting at the minimum level on the transmitter I found that that was unflyable. Uh, as soon as I tried to take off, it flipped. Uh, again, breaking propellers. The actual values that I am using are actually higher than Crash Me Up suggested. But that got rid of the vibration. The reason it was coming towards me is that when I was doing the gyro stabilization, it was sitting on its feet. And when it sits on its feet, it's at a slight angle. That angle pointing backwards, so it's then treating that as being level. So resetting the gyros again, was able to get that sorted out. And then I went to tidy up the wires. I loosened the power distribution board. Uh, I shortened the wires um, around the flight controller so that everything is fairly neat. It's not very clear from the picture, but I'm powering the servo from the motor connector and the flight controller board. This is normally a an input um, to power the flight controller board from the BEC on the ESCs, but as I'm powering the flight controller from a BEC on the power distribution board, uh, this is free to use as an output. You will also see that I have routed the uh, signal connectors from the ESCs uh, to a single servo connector, and this makes the connection uh, quite neat and simple. I've also marked it with a bit of white vinyl and a dot on the wire so that I get the orientation correct and that indicates motor 1. When I was putting things back together I had a bit of disaster. I was pushing the power distribution board back into place and I broke off the connector. Real pain. So I had to solder the wires directly on that. That took me about an hour. I then covered it with hot melt glue uh, to try and act as a bit of strain relief and mounted the board again, taking extra care this time. Took it out to fly and do an auto tune. That wasn't that successful. Um, it did vibrate in the air. Uh, it did wander away from me. I pulled it back and then started again and then it stopped. It looked like it finished. Uh, I let it land, switch off the motors, and I then switched it out of auto-tune mode. Uh, when I got home, I found that the settings were exactly the same as I had set them before we went out for that auto-tune flight. So nothing had happened. I was also trying flying it in loiter mode. It didn't seem to work that well. In fact, it crashed into a tree. Ended up with mud in the motor, uh, mud round the tail end and had to get a toothbrush and clear it out and switch cleaner and uh, air blaster to get the dirt out of it. Last couple of days ago went to fly it again and auto-tune again and again went up in the air, uh, did fairly violent vibe, uh, tilts, um, then slightly uh, less violent tilts. And all the while it was rotating round me with the tail pointed towards me. After it got to about 7 o'clock, it suddenly span quite violently in the air, same as it was doing when the servo was reversed. So, don't know what's happening there, 
but I think that the servo has given up the ghost. Maybe that one of the crashes has damaged the servo and then this last flight has uh, broken some cogs or something has gone wrong. So we need to inspect that. Um, I have some of the replacement Emacs servos on route. I had them ordered uh, about a month ago. That order got cancelled a few days ago, so I've ordered them from Banggood, a company I've used quite a lot, and so I'm quite confident that they will arrive. So until then, I'm grounded. Thanks for listening.